I'll be tying McPhail's Golden Stone nymph today. This is my version of it. And before I put too many wraps of thread on the hook, I just want to make sure that you have an opportunity to like and subscribe to my Riverkeeper Flies YouTube channel. And if you like what you see, share it with other people, please. So I'm using a size 6 2457 TMC hook. I've already put a few wraps of lead on it, nine or 10 wraps. And as you prepare this, I choose the size of lead that I can insert into the bead that will seat pretty well. For thread, I'll be using some Danville, it's a six aught in yellow, you can see. I'll start tying right at the end of the lead and I'm going to build a little bit of a ramp here and go over the lead to make sure it's secure. And continue down. For my, my dubbing, that's the wrong one. Here we go. <clears throat> it's some Spirit River Caddis Nymph dubbing. And I'll be using the Golden Stone color here. I put a little bit of dubbing around the thread each so it will attach to the thread more easily. And I found that if I add some dubbing now, I've got to cover all this lead anyway. And I'll just make a really light coating of it. And come down. I'll get down towards where I tie on both the tail and the wing case. They're the back of the fly. Through experience, I have found that once I put the thin skin on, which you'll see in a moment, it's much easier to attach to a little bit wider diameter. So this is the thin skin. And the color is golden stone. It comes in sheets. And what I do is cut strips off. And when I find about the right size, which will just slowly or a little bit go over the side on each, each, of the, each side of the body, then I put a mark on it for a template. So this is my size six hook. I've already prepared one and I've pulled it off and you can see it's very pliable. It's dull on one side and shiny on the other. And I want the shiny side up. So I will actually tie that down. I've already trimmed the tip, the tie-in point, and it will secure a lot easier now to this dubbed body. I'll make sure that's good and tight and flatten my thread for the tail. I'll be using some goose by it in a gold color. I'll pull off two pieces here. and tie them in one, one side. You can see that hopefully that the angle goes down. So I want to put that towards the hook. And as I tie this in, then the tails will actually go out a little bit. I wanna make sure that's on 
the bottom of that so that when I pull pull the thin skin over, it doesn't move that, separate it very much. And I'll take the other one tight on the other side. Make sure it's even. Use my thumbnail to hold it. Place a couple wraps on it. Position it in place. And now I'll move forward a little bit about to where the lead is. Grab those ends and trim. Next, I'll add in some gold wire, some small gold wire. This will be my ribbing. I'm going to tie it on the far side of the hook. Position it over on that side. And now I'll add a bunch of dubbing. On the fly pattern sheet, which I'll leave a link to below, you'll see I use a couple of other hooks as well, a Daiichi 1730, which is more of a straight hook, but it's got a bend right at the thorax. I find that for larger, larger sizes works pretty well. This is a size, this listed as a size six hook, but it's a small size six and I have an image on the fly pattern sheet showing the differences in the hook brands and I think I've got a size eight and a size six shown there. So I tie it in with a couple of different hook styles. And I'll stop right at the 50% point and we'll pull this case over the top and just pull it so it's tight. Make sure I don't bend over the edges. And I'll wrap just in front in order to secure it. And I'll take my ribbing material now and make five or six wraps. This will provide some segmentation. Make another wrap, make it doesn't move. Pull the wing case back. Make one more wrap there to secure it and we'll tie it off. <clears throat> wrap one time in front and that will lock it in. Helicopter. What I'm doing is creating some segmentation and it also secures down the back. I'll put just a tiny bit of dubbing to put over those wraps. And now we'll fold this back and make our work first wing case. So you can see I've got just a little bit of a flap And we'll continue to do that all the way up. For the legs, I'm using some Life Flex in a tan color. And as you can see, this is very flexible. I really like that. So I'll see if I can untangle it. And just pull one of these. As I prepare these, I'll just take and align the tips, make a cut, align all the tips again, and make another cut. And do that one more time. 
and now I've got the right size for my legs. I will go underneath the thread and bring it up on top. Make one more wrap and now I can position the legs to either side. I like to move this around so that the legs about the length of the tail and if I do that on one end of the leg then I don't have to trim both sides. So we'll just make sure that we've got that snug with a couple of more thread wraps but I will put some more dubbing on first. I'm minimizing my thread wraps and I will have a little bit of bare thread as I move that forward that will secure these and now I've got a couple of thread wraps. Pull this all of this back and move it forward. Check underneath to make sure that my lead is fully wrapped in there with with dubbing. I'm going to add a little bit more and I'll finish the thorax area. Make it a little bit bigger. Get the legs out of the way. Pull the thin skin forward and let it go about half the distance of the first segmentation. Use my thumb and forefinger. Make a wrap. Make sure you pull your legs out. And we'll even that up. A little more dubbing to go over the thread. and bring my thread forward right behind the bead. This will be our last segmentation. I've got one long fiber here I'll remove. The real insects have three wing cases like this, so that's what I'm trying to emulate. Make a soft wrap so you don't bend over the thin skin. and make a wrap or two right in front of it to tie it off, secure it. And now I'll pull this tight and come right down to the bead. And by pulling it tight when I trim it, that last piece of wing case will flop back down. Add a tiny bit more dubbing to hide my thread. And the final step is to make a whip finish, five turn whip finish. Trim my thread. And I'll come underneath here, make sure I don't pull my legs too tight, just want them taunt. And these will be a little bit shorter than the back legs. And there's a finished McPhail's Golden Stone Nymph, my version of it. Really effective fly. You can tie them in a variety of sizes and actually in different colors to imitate other stonefly nips. So hope you like that one. Be sure and hit the like button, subscribe to my Riverkeeper Fly YouTube channel, and I'll add a link to the fly pattern sheet below.